Hey punks, it's Miss Nora here with another session of Steampunks, and today we are going to focus on labyrinths. So um, it's going to be a big topic, and I'm going to have to move pretty quickly to pack this all into this video, but I just want to remind you that if you go on the YouTube page and you go underneath this episode, I'll have links to all the information so you can go back and delve in further. Um, so don't, be, don't get stressed if you feel like we're kind of like moving along. So um, what is a labyrinth? A labyrinth is a complex and circuitous path that leads from the beginning to the center and then back. And maybe not everybody knows what circuitous means. So I had a little like infographic here for you. <laughs> so if you were gonna go from point A to point B and go make a straight path, you would take a straight line, right? Very efficient. But if you were gonna go to point A to point B and take a circuitous path, this is the kind of path that you might take, right? It doubles around, goes out of the way, does a little loop-de-loop, -loop, and you would still get to point B, but it wouldn't be the straight path. So that's what a labyrinth um, would offer. And um, there's two different kinds of labyrinths. There is a maze and a meander. Now a maze is a little more like tricky. Like you have to have your wits about you because there are false uh, ends. You know, you end up, um, you think you're gonna be able to keep going and then it's closed off or you have to choose between going left or going right. Like it's a lot of like needing to be clever um, and making a lot of choices. A meander, is a kind of labyrinth that your path is kind of, um, it's not an unknown. You, you know the path that you need to walk and it's mapped out for you. And it's a very circuitous route and it brings you to the center very slowly and then you take the same path to get out. Um, so a meander is less about um, being a challenge and it's more about contemplation. So it slows you down, causes you to be more uh, meditative and more thoughtful and to look at your surroundings because you can't, you're not going from point A to point B in a straight line. You're going the circuitous route. So you have to slow down. It forces you to slow down. Um, so you'll see uh, labyrinths often in like spiritual spaces like um, churches or monasteries uh, for that reason. Um, so I wanted to read you a Greek myth that's like a very early example of a maze labyrinth because it's a little scary. Um, so I'm going to read that to you now. This is called Theseus and the Minotaur. And this is a fun kind of um, book of Greek myths because it's all in kind of comic book form, which I find much more um, entertaining. King Minos of Crete had long hated the people of Athens, for they had killed his son when he took all the prizes at the Athenian games. To prevent King Minos from waging war against them, every nine years the Athenians sent seven youths and maidens to be sacrificed to the Minotaur, the half-man, half-bull that lived in the labyrinth on Crete. So there he is, pretty frightening. <laughs> Theseus, son of King Aegis, was angered by this cruelty. Bravely, he offered to join the next victims and try to kill the Minotaur. His father begged him not to go with the others, but Theseus insisted and prepared to sail for Crete. He hoisted a black sail as a sign of respect for the victims, but promised to return with a white sail raised as a sign of his success. Great storms battered the little ship on its journey to Crete. When Theseus finally landed, he found King Minos waiting with his daughter, Ariadne. I hope I'm saying that right. Ariadne immediately fell madly in love with Theseus, and she resolved to save him from the Minotaur and marry him. And that night, Ariadne crept softly past the guards. She gave Theseus a sword 
and a ball of magic thread to guide him out of the maze. And the next day, the Athenians were thrown into the labyrinth. And once inside, Theseus ties one end of the thread to the door and set off in search of the Minotaur. The labyrinth was a confusing maze of cold, dark passages. Some led nowhere. Others took him deeper into the maze. The roar of the Minotaur grew louder, and suddenly, Theseus came face to face with the hideous monster. The struggle was long and fierce, for the Minotaur was enormously strong, but Theseus eventually drove his sword through its heart, and it sank to the ground, dead. Following the thread, Theseus traced his path back to the entrance of the labyrinth. Hearing the cheers of Theseus's friends, Ariadne quickly unlocked the door. Then everyone ran for the ship and set sail for Athens. And after a few days, they stopped at an island where Ariadne fell asleep. Theseus, unwilling to marry his enemy's daughter, left her sleeping on the sand. In all of this excitement, Theseus forgot to change his sail from black to white. Meanwhile, his father, King Aegeus, watched the anxiously for the, sh the ship, inciting the black sail and thinking the worst. He threw himself onto the rocks below. As Athenian parents celebrated their children's return, Theseus mourned the death of his father. So sad, but heroic Theseus became king of Athens and lived to win many more victories. So that's the Greek myth that has to do with the labyrinth. And that was like a scary maze labyrinth. I wanted to show you these. These are some patterns. They're like kind of traditional patterns for labyrinths. And you'll see like the basic outline. So circular, make yourself your way from the outside to the inside and back super slow. Here's another one. Pretty cool. So I think next we're going to talk about all the different types of um, labyrinths that are possible. Um, labyrinths can be indoors or they could be outdoors. They can make, be made out of all kinds of materials. Um, indoors, I've seen um, them painted on the floor tiles, or I've also seen people have made them out of masking tape on the floor, which is something you could do at home. Um, an outdoor labyrinth, I've seen them made out of natural materials like bushes and flowers and trees, um, stepping stones, um, grass, uh, yeah, pretty cool. So I have three or four examples on my computer that I'm going to show you guys. They're all a little different, so I think that'll be fun for you to see. Okay, this is an indoor labyrinth. This is Grace Cathedral um, in San Francisco. So here's someone standing in the middle of it. You can see the pattern is very similar to that one I showed you, the purple one. And I can scroll up a little bit. There's another picture that's really cool. Um, here, this one is more like from above. You can see the entire thing. So that's pretty rad. I'll show you a different one. This is called Eagle's Point. This is an outdoor um, labyrinth. Interestingly, it's also in San Francisco. That's fine. Um, here, it's right by the sea. And it appears that they made this labyrinth from stones. I think that's really beautiful. Um, this one is in Italy. This is the Garden of Villa Pisani. I might be saying it wrong. Um, so you can see it here. I mean, this is not the greatest photo in the world, but it's all made out of hedges. 
and you go from the outside to the inside, and when you get to the center, you go up at the top of that tower. <laughs> I thought that was really beautiful. Another example of what they can look like or be made of. Um, one I didn't put in here, and I'm gonna Google real fast, because you could actually go to this one, is there is one made out of flowers at the Ithaca Children's Garden. So, Ithaca Children's Garden Labyrinth. And I think they're closed right now, but I encourage you to go during the summer. It's like a memorial garden um, for people that have lost children. Um, again, kind of like a contemplative area. So here it is in full bloom. I'll show you this little. Both symbolize hope and the cycle of life. Labyrinths have been used for centuries by many cultures around the world to promote healing and meditation. The labyrinth at the Ithaca Children's Garden is a beautiful, peaceful, uplifting, and sensory experience for all to enjoy in times of great joy and in times of grief. The labyrinth provides room for community engagement and healing and allows individuals to bring their own interpretation and meaning to their visit. In the spring of 2011, the Ithaca Perinatal Loss Support Group approached Ithaca Children's Garden about creating a space to remember babies and children who have passed while celebrating the lives that carry on. The idea of a three-season, abundantly blooming bulb labyrinth to remember these children and honor their families grew. Many people don't realize that birth tragedies, including miscarriage, stillbirth, and neonatal death, affect nearly 900,000 families every year. It's a tough subject to talk about, and sometimes there simply are no words. The Bulb Labyrinth Memorial Garden holds the space when words are not enough. Once the idea for the labyrinth came together, fundraising and planning began with a goal of $30,000 and 30,000 bulbs. So we don't the have to watch the entire thing. Flower bulbs poured in and brown but I just wanted to share that with you because that's like an, another example of like the diversity of lab labyrinths that's completely different than the other two, you know, three examples that I showed you. I love that it changes through the seasons because different bulbs pop up. Um, so if you guys ever seen Labyrinth the movie with David Bowie and Jim Henson's puppets, um, if you haven't, you should see it. Beth, we should put that on our Amazon order because I don't think we have it at the library. Um, I wanted to show you the drawing by M.C. Escher that was, that inspired the Labyrinth in that film. This is called Relativity. And I think it's really cool. It's kind of like gravity defying kind of fantasy scape. <laughs> so one other thing I wanted to share with you is um, how to make your own maze on paper. Because I was trying to think like, is this something we could make ourselves? And sure, if you can't do it outside and you can't do it inside, you can do it on a piece of paper. So here's the instructions that I have. And if you guys want to pause and get a piece of paper, that's fine too. For some reason, I'm not seeing my one notebook, but that's all right. I'll use this one. So you can see here, this will be the end result. And this is where you start. So we start with a big square. And you have an entrance and an exit. Right? The little. Then you have another square on the inside. And you can make another entrance and exit, right? And a different spot. So you go along that same vein. Here's the next one. You made a third, you make a fourth box. 
with the entrances and the exits. And I'm doing quickly, it's not very neat. You'd probably want to do it a little neater than that. And then here you can do the boxes within and makes a box within a box down here. And eventually what you want to do is lightly use your pencil to trace out the route, the correct route through your maze. And then when you do that, you would go around and close off all the other possibilities so that you can only go through that one way. And then the end, what you would probably do is erase that right path so nobody can see it. And maybe just redraw the whole thing so that <laughs> it's not obvious where your path is. But this was one method of drawing your own maze that I thought was really doable. Um, and I'll include that in the show notes too so that you can get a better look at it and try it yourself. So the only thing left that I really wanted to do with you guys is I wanted to introduce you to my own outdoor labyrinth. <laughs> um, so I just want you to know that how it's made is Mr. Nora went with a lawnmower and mowed a maze through our, through our meadow. So generally when our property is all grown, you know, like in the summer months, the uh, meadow is very high and then the mowed parts are very low. So it's very obvious where the path lies. But right now we're just coming into spring. So all of the grasses are all laid down. So it's a little rough to see where the path is, but I'll show you where the path is. Um, let's look for some signs of spring. So this is the beginning of the labyrinth. How you know is because there's a stone lion. <laughs> So there's actually three more lions in here too. All right, let's go. This is Tate. Come on, baby. Here's a crocus. I walk around this labyrinth probably once a day, but more if I can. It kind of helps me relax me and also it helps me know like what's going on at the, on the property like in different seasons and stuff. And I feel like that's important. And the dog loves it because he doesn't need a leash. Come on, G. Take I also think it's fun in the labyrinth at different times of day to see where the shadows lie.
the ground feels so squishy right now, probably because it snowed just a few days ago. It hasn't had time to sink in. Keep your ears open because you'll hear lots of birds, particularly when we get close to the water. Here are our, our apples. There's lots of moss on the ground. He always cheats on the, the labyrinth and walks in between. So you guys can see how taking a circuitous path to the property makes it seem bigger, longer than it would ordinarily. I love how Tig's following the camera and not me. I think he's part of the crew. <laughs> so you can tell we've been walking for a pretty long time. The house is only right there. So here's the pond.
That sounded like a woodpecker. Soon there'll be so many frogs that when you walk past, they jump into the water and scare you. Oh, here's another sign of spring. These are called snowdrops. These are little white flowers. And they did get snowed on, they're still here. I like how fluffy these are. These are cattail seeds. And you guys know what these are. We have a lot of them at the library. Milkweed pods. They're all dried though. So we're going to begin our walk back. Um, so I think I'm going to say goodbye to you right here. Um, I miss you guys terribly. I can't wait to see you again in real life. Have a good night, guys.